On this episode of Fishing Edge, I'm back in Coffs Harbour. And while the township's loaded with great scenery and things to do, the offshore waters are not only loaded with fish, but also spectacular scenery in the form of a bunch of islands known as South and North Solitary. And while these in their own right can be and are fish magnets, today I was after some action on lures. So first stop was back to jetty boating to see Norm and the boys and hopefully get a bit of info on where to head in search of a few fish. Well, we're a couple of days into our Coffs Harbour trip. Yesterday wasn't so good, the day before was great. And this morning we had a little bit of a sleep in because the plan today is to come out here and fish the offshore reefs with soft plastic lures and metal jigs. Such a fun way to fish. And the great thing about your lure fishing is it's quite often best during the middle of the day. You know, for years and years I thought bait fishing, big snapper, it's dawn and dusk, that's the only time you'll get them. But let me tell you, plastics and jigs through the day can produce some phenomenal fishing. Let's find some ground and find some fish. Now found what I think I want to find. I've come up onto the top of the reef. We're sort of up in about 36 metres. And right now we're dropping back off the edge. And as silly as it may sound, I want to find the edge of the reef because that's where the big snapper will tend to hold. Where the reef dies out and it goes to gravel, that's where they patrol up and down the edges. So I'm finding that edge, work out which way our drift's gonna go, and then position ourselves so we slide along that. There's heaps of life up on the top of the reef. As I come off it, there won't be as much. I'm marking some insane bait there with fish all over it. I'm just gonna drop a jig right now. That's crazy. Good thing to do, just tick the boat into reverse. I'm gonna go back over this bait because there's a chance you can get a bite before you've even started fishing. That's really good bait. I like those fish sitting under it. Alrighty, there we go. Fishing 40 metres of water out here on a great big long reef rubble system. And I'm working between plastics and the good old Koika jig, which you can see there. And at the moment, I'm sort of starting out jigging, poking around a bit, trying to get a bit of a lay of the land, find where the bait's sitting, where the reef edges really are, and all that sort of stuff. And it's a really handy way to do it because also, when you mark some stuff, you can just pull up and quickly drop the jig down, and it gets down there nice and fast. And I did just that, and we got bit pretty well straight away. And although it's not a big fish, it's a snapper, and it's a good start. My casting outfit's my little Inspira reel, my Trickster rod, and it's got eight kilo Blackmagic Rainbow Elite braid on it. It's much slicker than the old Rainbow braid. It's exceptionally good. And because I'm making a lot of casts, I'm running 20 pound Blackmagic Fluorocarbon leader. And that leader knot's going in and out of the guides a lot. I've caught a few snapper. You can see the jig head's quite chewed up there. They grab the head of the plastic, so there's a bit of wear and tear on the leader, and I hate gear failure, because there's every chance that next fish you could catch could be the fish of a lifetime. So, after every hour or so, I have no qualms about chopping that bit of old leader off, getting a new bit, and tying a new leader on. It gives you that peace of mind. You're gonna feel a lot better knowing you've got a fresh leader knot, and a fresh leader when you get clunked by that big snapper. Got a couple of plastics just drifting out the back, and I'm just working my jig. Oh, there's a, there's a fish on a plastic as well. That's a better fish. I'm not gonna worry about this one, because this is a pinky. This is a much better fish. Oh, there's another one on the other spin rod. Look at that. So we've hit a patch of fish through here. That's just how it is, and this is where it's really important too. We just go mark, and I'm just saving that spot so we can get on that same drift again. That fish is on there, he's all right. This is on one of the storm hypnogrubs, or hypnogrubs. They've got a big, big curly tail on them. And they swim at the slowest of speeds because they've actually got a little ball on the back of them that just makes the tail kick. And that's why just drifting with these has worked so well. I'm happy with this because let me tell you, it's been a slow old morning. A smart person would just use a net. <sighs> I don't know if it's excitement or just pure relief 
But look at that hypno grub, what I was talking about, that big soft curly tail, and even it just sit in there, just shake that around. Now it's got heaps of movement. He's getting that classic north coast look about him too, that bumpy head starting, this little nose starting here. And these guys are such predators. Okay, so what I've got here is a few rods out. On this one here, I have actually got one of these new Joker Shads from Storm on. They're such a great plastic. The colors are amazing, but what makes this paddle tail so good, if I want a nice fast retrieve, I leave that little keel piece in on the bottom. If I want a nice slow, real tail kick to it, which is great for barramundi, or just as I've got here, where I want that plastic just wriggling as it just drifts through the water, you pull that little keel piece out and that tail can move more freely. On my casting rod, I've got one of the new Joker Verts. These things are cool. Just like a jerk shad style plastic, they sink nice and quickly through the water. They've got that little V tail, but these guys are a bit different. They've got those two balls on the end that give it a little bit more wriggle. And you can see this little wing piece that's in here. The idea of that, if you want to fish this one slow, just like on those, you leave that in and it gives it a bit more of a glide and a bit more of a wriggle. If we want to fish it fast or get it down deep in tide and current, you can actually rip that piece out. It reduces the drag on the tail, helps it to wriggle faster and get down through the water column quicker. It gives it a more erratic action. But for now, I'm going to leave that in because I'm just going to be giving this little pops along the bottom and it's just going to glide and wriggle and jiggle and look really, really good in this great color like that. First cast with a new plastic, I just put on one of the new Joker verts and it got monstered. And we've come back up, not on exactly the same drift as a previous one where we got bites, but on the same sort of line of the reef. And it's really interesting that if you take note of your surrounds and what your sounder and your GPS tell you, you can get a pretty good mental picture of what's going on. And the action is happening right as we get to the edge of the reef. This is just light tackle, little Akuma Inspire 40. And it's such a nice piece of gear, let me tell you. And I've loaded it with the new Black Magic Elite. Hey, that's a good fish. Look at that. And that's on the drifting plastic. That is a good fish. A really good fish. I just got to keep that line tight. Oh, that's a big fish. And it's such a different bite when you get a fish on a lure, especially like a snapper. You know, they're, they're hitting a bait like a true predator, which is what they are. Oh, that's a better fish. And I would not be surprised if this fish is, on this rod, is the same sort of size. There's a little joker vert, look at that tail. It's got that forked bit, the two balls on the end, but that little piece in the middle, you can rip that out if you want. But for a slower retrieve, which is what I said I was doing, you leave it in and it just gives it this nice little wriggling glide. I just pop that out. Ah, first throw. Just a little Seamar 40 with eight kilo Black Magic Inferno braid, and I use it just for everything. What have we got? Oh, it's Barry the Bonito. There we go. And I might actually keep him because we've got a bit of bait in the boat, but a bit of fresh bait's always good. And later on this afternoon, depending how this lure fishing goes. I might have to anchor up and fish some baits right on dusk. But for now, that there ugh, is a bonito. Such a great little animal. I love them, they've got those stripes, they've got this big dorsal fin with the black spot. They've got little fangs on them. They're quite a predator. They're good eating, but this guy's gonna be put right into the ice box for a bit of bait later on. So I've got the drifting rods out. But to fish a plastic in 40 metres of water, even 20 metres of water, if you've got a bit of a tide, there's a trick to it. You want to fish where you're going, not where you've been. So although it seems a bit weird, 
we're fishing forward of the boat. And the thing I really like to do is probably fish 45 degrees, make a great big long cast like that because our drift is going that way, the current's actually coming this way. And what's gonna happen is that plastic can now sweep down and sink down through the water column. And don't be surprised if it gets eaten just a meter or two under the surface by a snapper. They sit right up high. Wherever the bait is, that's where they will be. But for now, it's sweeping down, it's sinking down, unassisted, slack line, just keep feeding out the braid just like this, but be ready for a bite. And then once that gets down, I can start working it that way back to the boat. If I cast that way, we're gonna be drifting this way and it's gonna be really hard to try and get that plastic to sink down because we're constantly pulling away from it. So that is the trick to fishing with your drift. I literally just missed a fish a couple of seconds ago on that rod. I had a bump on this rod and then this one keeled off. He's basically decompressing as he comes up. You'll see these bubbles hit the surface in a second. This is all the sort of stuff that you can see because it's calm when it's rough. Look at the bubbles out there. These guys do not like being grabbed by the tail. At home I grab by the tail all the time, but up here they're not fans of it. Look at that, bit of sunlight on it. And it goes to show that they do eat all day long. They don't just eat at dawn and dusk. And maybe just at this time of the day, the bait fish get active. So the fish get active eating lures that look like bait. We'll send you back. Check this out. This is how you know your sound is working really well. That's the snapper swimming straight back down to the bottom that I just released. That's cool. With braid being so thin, quite often when you join your leader to your braid, the actual braid can chop through the knot. So we quite often tie a double because it doubles the thickness of the braid, there's a fish on that, but he's okay. It doubles the thickness of the braid and it stops it from chopping through your leader. A really simple thing you can do is get your braid, fold the end of it like that. You don't even have to tie a double. Fold the end, wet it, get your bit of leader, and then if you tie, say, a surgeon's knot, as all you need to do is treat that double strand of braid as a single, wet the whole lot together, go like that, one, two, three, four times. Keep them both the same. Make sure it's really wet. And then get those loops to stay together as you slide them in like that. They'll roll over each other. And that there is a surgeon's knot with a double strand thickness of braid. You can then trim your edges just like this. Trim your tag like that. And you have tied yourself a really fast, really easy knot. It gets you back into fishing, but gives you ultimate knot strength without having to tie a double. That plastic's down on the bottom now, I can tell because the line stopped pulling out. And when it comes to working a jerk shad, it's quite easy. A nice erratic sort of retrieve like that gets a lure that has really no action when it falls, have a lot of action on the movement. As I do that, this thing zigzags left and right. It looks like a bait fish that's wounded or in distress and it pulls the fish in. And then when that plastic starts to sink back to the bottom, bang, that's when you tend to get the bite. You can really mix it up. You can do just a single you know, flick. You can do a one, two, three. You can give it just a couple of shakes. You can really mix it up. And it pays to do that because quite often the very retrieve will get you the bite. After being smacked by that last snapper, it's the end of the day for this joker shad. I'm gonna put a new one on because it will stay on the jig head much better. When I put them on, quite simply lay the jig head along the side of the plastic, work out it comes back about five mil in the front of that groove. Shove that on there, pop the hook out, and then just slide that up gently. The trick's to rig them nice and straight, then they'll swim better, you'll get more bites. This fish, which I assume is a snapper, 
Couldn't have been any more than mid-water. There was nowhere near the bottom. And it's often where the big guys are. We've drifted out off the reef. We haven't had a bite for a while. We're just on scattered bottom here. This guy has just slammed the five inch joker shad. And it's been a very productive lure today. Ripping that bottom keel out of the tail is allowing it to have a lot more wriggle. And at a slow speed, it's just down there, just kicking away slowly in that real bait fishy color. I love that pearly belly. It has a lot of contrast. It would kick off any light that's down there. Here we go. Oh, there's some color. Always be ready with your snapper too. As they see the boat and sort of at that time when you see them, they often put in that last big ditch effort for freedom. Um, there goes the other rod. It's always the way, always on different sides of the boat. This is the one that I was working when that first fish got hooked up. I'm gonna quickly land this guy and send him back. It's actually not a bad snapper. It's got a lot of weight to it. Look at that up in the sunlight. You can hear the drag going on that other reel. I'll send this guy back. He's off. Please tell me he's still there. Yeah, he's there. It's happened just about on every fish today. You get one on, you get another one on. They're obviously just in little patches. You're not marking a lot on the sound or anything like that. That fish is swimming back down to the bottom. I can see him heading back down there on the sounder. Not a big fish but still a very nice one. There we go. Too good. Such a good day. Whales over there, calm seas, snapper. Almost had a pearl perch, but I lost it. It's all good. That's all we're gonna do here is move back up our drift. I've done two drifts here. I'm gonna go back for the third on a slightly different line because we've had a few bites in this area. If you use a sounder, use GPS, you can stay off the edge of the reef and on the prime lines where the fish are feeding. Again, move up, start another drift, cast the plastics out, or plastic, and you just get slammed. This didn't even make it anywhere near the bottom. Oh, 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 eat, eat, eat. Got one on the jig as well. That's just that little... Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I'll just get this guy. Get him. Pop that hook out, give you a quick look, and get stuck into this guy. And this is on one of the new Adajo jig rods from Storm. And the idea of these over the Gamoku, which you've seen a lot on Fishing Edge and a lot in magazines, the Adajo's a slow jigging rod. It's not made for big aggressive lifts. It's made for very twitchy sort of retrieves. Here we go, I'll lift him in. There we go. Again, just those little tiny assist hooks. This guy's even just got the one. I'll send him back and I'm gonna show these two jigs. He's out of here. And that, my friends, is the slow rocker. And that is the koika. Straight away you can see similarities but differences. Both have got that V-shaped side to them like the hull of a boat so that when they sink, they go through the water like that. They've got their flat side. They both run little assist hooks, but as you can see, he's short and quite fat. This guy, longer and skinnier. This one's better for a bit of a faster retrieve, while this one's better for the slower retrieve. Got my friendly seabird there, come to say hello. And that is about the smallest fish I reckon I've caught all day. The sun's getting low in the sky. And let me just say, Coffs Harbour has certainly turned it on. Thankfully, the weatherman got it wrong in the right direction for us. And the fishing, well, something that I think everyone should certainly get up here and experience because 
Coffs Harbour is just such a great place. The fishing's unbelievable. And Tom Lawrence, you're in big trouble making me wind all those fish in today. You were supposed to be here to give me a hand. But anyway, I'm sure we're going to be back sometime soon in Coffs Harbour because this part of the world is too good to come to just once. <laughs>